So you've probably already seen all of those metal melter projects which are made from microwave oven parts. Which is actually a very good project so I decided to make my own. But maybe slightly modified one. Okay, so the first thing to look at was the microwave oven transformers, which are the main part of the project. One of them which I had was already modified and the other one was not. Next I used this thick wire which was 30mm in diameter and I inserted it in the transformer making it a secondary winding. Which was actually much more painful than it looks because the thickness and length of the wire made it almost impossible to bend and insert into such small cavity designed for thinner secondary wires. But when I was finished, I was left with modified transformer with exposed wires on the output which could be used as metal melter itself. After cleaning input terminals with some pliers, I decided to connect it to the mains voltage which is 230 volts AC with alligator clips and wires, which is super dangerous but good enough for testing if handled properly. After this, it was time for the first test. We are going to be testing just this one transformer to see how it does when it comes to metal melting. But remember that everything that happens now will be twice as powerful for the finished project since my idea was was to connect two of the transformers in series. For the first test, I tried to melt this tiny wood screw by securing it to the output wires. And the result was pretty good, the screw quickly got red hot and was about to melt all the way but I turned it off so I don't light my house on fire. For the next test I used my current clamp since I was curious to know how much power it actually outputs and I was pretty proud to see my clamp getting overloaded which means more than 400 amps is flowing through that little screw and as it gets hotter and hotter current drops slightly. Now it was time for modifying the other transformer which I secured to my desk with clamps and after that I used my handsaw to remove the front side of the secondary winding. And with some help of the other tools like pliers, cutting pliers and my sister's toothbrush, I cleaned and removed any leftover parts of secondary winding. Later on cleaning, cutting and brushing was then repeated for backside of transformer's secondary winding. Next I used the drill bit and drill with the hope to remove inner part of secondary. The process was very painful because the thin wires from which the secondary was made kept on stacking to my drill bit and making the process even harder than to drill through the chunk of steel same in size, until eventually my drill bit broke. So since I had no other way of removing inner part, I just took another but bigger drill bit, which also got demolished. After having hard time with drilling holes in secondary, I finally removed most of it from one side. So to finish it off, I took pliers and removed bigger chunks with them. After cleaning any leftovers from one side of the secondary, it was time to do the same thing to the other side, so I kept on drilling holes with my drill and the new drill bit, as well as keeping everything clean. It is also very important not to damage any wire enamel of the primary winding, because that would lead to short circuit between windings, which would pretty much destroy the transformer. It is also important to remove wire which comes between secondary and primary. Now after cleaning it all up, I noticed two metal spacers placed between secondary and primary. It is not a mistake if I leave them where they are, but I remove them just to have more space for secondary winding. It was pretty much done at this point, so I just used pliers to remove paper protection around inner walls of the transformer and the brush again to make everything look clean, uh, except my desk of course. With the secondary removed, it was time to insert a fresh new wire which has the same dimensions like the wire in the first transformer. It is very important to insert the wire in the same direction as the first transformer, so when they get connected in series, they won't be out of phase, which may result in zero voltage at the output or strange behavior of the transformer. For the next step, I used two scrap pieces of metal and introduced them to my metal grinder. 
to make them look something like this, which is actually something supposed to be looking like output terminals. Next, I took a piece of wooden board, which will be used as base for the project. So I took the transformers and laid them out just to see how it would all look at the end. And once I was happy with that, I used my ruler and took some quick measurements to fit everything perfectly in line. I used a marker to mark the position of transformers, just so I can later drill some tin holes to guide the wood screws, which will hold everything in place. Next I took both of my transformers and placed them on the wooden base in line with previously drilled holes. So after that I used my screwdriver and 8 tiny wood screws which I used to secure the transformers in place by screwing them in previously drilled holes. Next I had to cut off the end of the wires which are going to be connected in series and which I connected with metal clamps since I had no proper tools and cable connectors. It was such a painful process but in the end it seemed to work just fine so no doubt on that. To safely connect the transformers to 230 volts AC I used four pieces of wires which were previously crimped with cable terminals and I soldered them to the mains cable in pairs so in that way the transformer's primary windings would get connected in parallel to 230 volts AC. And to isolate the connections I used heat shrink tubing as well as some electrical tape to hold everything together to get something like this. Next I used what was supposed to be output terminals and started drilling some holes. On one side of the terminal hole had to be bigger than on the other side so that we can pass through a screw and secure it in place later on. So I mark where I need to cut the excess of the wires and I cut them off afterwards. I again use same metal clamp to secure output wires to the terminals which got secured into base with screws and at this point we were actually done and the only thing that was left to do was some testing. For the first test I use same size screw which I tested with only one transformer. And I was surprised how quickly it got melted pretty much to liquid and fell off. I mean, let's compare it with the test of only one transformer. And also you can hear how much louder transformer humming actually is. Next, I use this much thicker screw. And despite the bad connections which led to very loud sparks and screws sticking to my terminals, I successfully got the screw red hot and melting. Next, I tried this funny looking screw and a lot of sparks showed up again which led to the conclusion that my output terminals are not made from right material and that they are definitely not thick enough because they almost melted while doing this test but the screw got melted down either way. And for the final test I tried to melt down an old screwdriver which I had laying around and I definitely succeeded in that because the screwdriver got no red hot but white hot. And with that, this project was finished and despite small mistakes I made, we can call it a big success. If you liked the project, it would be awesome if you leave a like and subscribe and keep your eyes open because some crazy projects are about to come out.